Morning everyone, I hope you're well. So I wanted to film a video all about how I got into med school and my journey to get there and what I did. Um, it was a bit unconventional. Uh, sorry about Ophelia. As soon as I start talking, she wants to get involved and talk to. I had some setbacks and kind of just to encourage other people out there that might not have got in to med school yet or might have had some negative feedback or setbacks on, along their journey too. So I just thought I'd share five main things that I learned as well. To start, I think it's important to say that the whole application process of applying to med school and the journey is a gruelling process. There's so many hoops to jump through along the way. There's exams that you have to sit, there's interviews, there's the grades that you need to get from way back when, from when you're doing your GCSEs at 16. So you really need to start thinking about it from when you're about 14, really, and, and, and earlier, so be prepared. I'm, I'm quite a determined person, and I kind of pers persevered through all of the little setbacks I had. There were many opportunities where I could have just given up as well, because things went terribly wrong, even recently, up until a couple years ago. So I'm looking down because I've got some notes here, I just don't want to forget anything. When I did my GCSEs, my GCSEs were good, but they weren't strong enough. They were A's and B's. And to get into medical school, I knew that you needed to get A stars and A's. It could have been better, and I knew that. So I thought for my best chance of getting in would be to change to a better school as well, because I was in a, a state school, comprehensive school, and... Um, I moved to a grammar school because my grades were good enough for grammar school, but um, I knew they might not be for, for medicine in the future. So I thought, for my A-levels, let me go to a better school. So I moved to a grammar school, and I was very distracted in both my GCSEs and A-levels. Like, I was a bit of a wild teenager. I rebelled from everything, <laughs> from my parents and um, just life. Yeah, I just rebelled. And the time that I should have spent studying, I was out doing other stuff. So... And it's hard to, I think, put so much pressure on young people that early on. When I look back to being 16, 18, it's like a different person. I went to grammar school and they did some talks about getting into medical school, getting into Oxbridge and Red Brick Universities. And I kind of knew this was a little bit out of my reach. But still, I went to the talks on how to get into medical school and becoming a doctor because I thought there's... There's a way, there has to be a way. And I went to see my careers advisor as well at the school. And he said that my grades weren't strong enough for UK medical schools. My AS grades were good, but they needed to be even better, my A-level grades. And I probably won't, wouldn't get interviews off my GCSEs and A-levels. I'd had work experience, I got work experience, but yeah, it was just my grades that were letting me down. So I had that chat with the careers advisor and he told me about a university ab abroad, the Charles University in Prague. And I've met so many people here in Cyprus that have studied there. So um, in retrospect, I wish that I had applied and gone. But anyway, <laughs> back, to, back to what happened. So I, I found out about it from him and I remember <laughs> the conversation like it was yesterday. And I just thought I can't move abroad. I was 17 at the time. I'd, I think I'd travelled abroad finally, I went to America but I stayed with, with family but I, I'd never been away from my parents for so long and the, the thought of being a, abroad for my studies just did not appeal to me and I had a boyfriend at the time and <laughs> yeah it just, it just didn't seem like the right thing to do so I kind of just put that to the side and thought I'm going to try anyway, I'm going to apply, who knows I might get an interview Back then I was ever the optimist. So I applied, I got two conditional offers um, for biomedical sciences. So one from UEA and one from Brunel. And I was all about proximity. I wanted to be close to my parents, like I'm an only child. And I didn't really think about how good the uni was or like ranking wise or anything like that. I just thought, okay, Brunel's closer. <laughs> like UEA is nice, Norwich is nice. But London is something I'm familiar with and I've been up there like to do my hair back in the day and I always get my weave and stuff. So uh, I thought London seems like a good option. And I went to visit Brunel and I liked it. I liked the vibe there. I liked that it was a campus university. 
So I went there and I studied biomedical sciences. I really enjoyed the course. It was a really great time. I made some lifelong friends there that were even bridesmaids at my wedding. So it was a really great experience. Yeah, I remember like grades wise throughout university, I've always been like a student that, that wants to do the best, but I get distracted by life. So first year, I kind of dosed a bit. <laughs> I studied hard, I always attended lectures, but I don't know, I was just adjusting to university life and um, I would go out a lot. So in first year, I got a 2-1 and I was hoping for a first. I was really hoping for a first. So I was quite disappointed when I saw it. I don't want to offend anyone that got two ones or anything, but um, for me, medicine was still the goal. So I knew that I had to get the highest. And after all those setbacks for my GCSEs and A-levels, I didn't want that to be my story again. So sorry, I'm a bit nasally. I've got a blocked nose. <laughs> for my second and final years, I got first and I ended up graduating with a, with a first. And I was so happy about that. Um, so many good things happened to me at Brunel. I got in touch with a, a research group and um, got a scholarship from the Wellcome Trust to do a research project at St George's in London for six weeks and it was fully funded and everything so I did a research project there and then that put me in touch with a group for my final year project in the university. So my final year project was a bioengineering project and it was just something really different and I think that made it really exciting. So I really enjoyed my final year, my second year and my placement year. So I did a placement year and I spent a year in Cambridge. And the reason I did it was because I'd had so many negative things happen with my grades and getting into medical school. So I thought it's always important to have a plan B, a plan C. So my plan B was to work for a year afterwards if I didn't get in after my subsequent application after Brunel. So I was working at this placement for a year and it was in the pharmaceutical industry. So I was analyzing samples from clinical trials and it was a lot of lab work and it was fun. Again, I made some really good friends there and it's such a, it's such a nice area. I was living in a village called Ely and I just had a really great time. So they offered me a job for after I graduated and that was my goal, so I had that back up there. In the end, I ended up applying for medical school. Exam-wise, I sat the GAMSAT and I sat the UK CAT. Now, my GAMSAT at the time, I didn't do as well in the science section for application to university. My score wasn't high enough, my overall score was, but for the universities that I was looking at, the science section had to be a certain level and it wasn't that level and my essays were the best. <laughs> my essays were so good because of my A-levels in geography and history, um, not history, sorry, geography and sociology, my essay writing was really, really good and I'd put a lot of time into that, but my science section was lacking. So I had to resit the GAMSAT and I sat, I went to two courses in Dublin as well to help so it was put on by Dr. Ferdinand, the, the writer of the Gold Standard GAMSAT book. So I attended those courses. One was a, just a day where you, no, it was a weekend actually, it was two days where he talks through the science section. And then the next one was a practice test and you talk through the practice test. And I found those invaluable because I had to, when I was on placement year, I was studying for this exam because you can keep your score for two years. So I thought, let me do this, get this out of the way. I was studying from placement year. In my lunch breaks, I would go and do practice essays. Each essay, half an hour, that's my hour's lunch break. So I would do that every day to make sure my essays were good. And then in the morning, I'd wake up at five or 6 a.m. before work and go through my science stuff. So I was doing that all through placement year. And then in my final year because I had to resit as well. So I was doing that alongside my final year project and my degree. So I remember that time it was, I don't know how I did it, <laughs> but it prepared me for medical school because medical school itself is such a hard slog. It's the amount that we learn, but let me know, that's a whole other video. So I sat the GAMSAT, sat the UK CAT, sat the GAMSAT twice. My score the second time was really, really good. But for some reason I doubted myself I thought that, because you don't find out the uh, cutoff score for GAMSAT unis, that you, the score that you need to interview, until 
after you apply. So I sat my UK cat. My UK cat score wasn't great. It was average. But my Gamset score was really, really good. But for some reason, I doubted myself and thought that the score for the Gamset cutoff would be higher than what mine was. So I applied to one Gamset uni and three UK cat unis. And I got rejected from all three UK cat unis. I think it was Warwick, Keel, and Kings maybe. I can't even remember, it was so long ago. But basically I got rejected for their graduate entry programs. And I think for Kings, I might have even applied to the five year program. But I didn't get in basically. And then the interview I got was for St George's in London. And it was the, the, the only GAMSAT uni apply, I applied to. And with the way it works with the GAMSAT, or it did back then, was that if you pass, if you pass the exam, then that means you can interview all the GAMSAT unis because they all have the same cutoff for that year. That's the cutoff score. So I could have got four interviews if I just trusted myself and had faith. But I doubted myself and what the situation was. Kind of put a limit on God there, but yeah. So I went to my St George's interview. It was a multi-mini interview, um, like different stations, and it was a lot of stress and a lot of pressure. I didn't perform as well as I would have hoped, so I didn't get in. But they told me about the St George's Cyprus course. So that was a separate application interview. And I interviewed, did a Skype interview. I was a lot more comfortable and I applied and I got in. So my offer for St George's Cyprus came in and basically the way this course works, it's St George's University's course, but it's just delivered in Cyprus and there's multiple sites that we can go to, America, Israel and stay in Cyprus too. And there's lots of opportunities like further on as well to do electives abroad that the university has ties with. So I thought this is a great opportunity. Let me just put that to the side for now. And four, four years on from when I was in that room with that careers advisor, I was in a different place. I was more mature, I was ready to maybe take the plunge and live abroad. So yeah, I did that. And those were the universities I applied to initially. I applied to Limerick as well because they had a scholarship for the whole course. And I also applied for a Rotary scholarship, which gave me about $30,000 to study abroad. And um, I had to go for an interview in Oxford, for it and that funded that came through before the limerick scholarship so i thought I, I prayed and i thought if the rotary scholarship comes through first then i'll go to cyprus if the limerick one comes through first i'll go to limerick because i had no money for to fund the course <laughs> so it was whatever came through first really as i said before i like to have a plan c and my plan c's were um riga strada's university in latvia i'd looked at Ukraine, Poland, I'd looked at because I'd heard people studied there from the UK. I'm quite an impatient person. I could have just reapplied after I didn't get in the first time after my A-levels. Um, or I could have reapplied again after I didn't get in to the four universities in the UK. But I wanted to go to med school and I wanted to go now. I didn't want to stay doing something I didn't want to do and waste more years. So that's my journey. <laughs> that if you've got any questions you can just comment and let me know five things that i would say that i've learned from this situation is when parents say to you that you shouldn't let boys distract you and that there's plenty of time for that later listen to them relationships will last if they're meant to be so don't let it hinder your journey and your education i would say don't be averse to studying abroad there's nothing wrong with studying abroad. There's nothing to be scared of. You'll, you'll make friends. Everyone's in the same boat. There's always international students. Number three, GCSE grades and A-levels matter. So as I said in the beginning, when you're 14, 12, 13, think about these things. If you want to do medicine, then if you are weak in maths, then get a tutor or find YouTube videos. They're free if you can't afford tutors. Number four, be open to taking time off and reapplying or working. Life is tortuous. It's not a straight trajectory to get to where you want to go to. So be open to taking a detour. I've had to do that. I even had to take two years out of my medical degree to work. Number five, it's a long road. So make sure it's for you. Do work experience, speak to medical students and see how hard it is. Oh my 
my hat's going. She's like ripping up my sofa. And uh, yeah, do work experience, speak to medical students. Ah, my camera just turned itself off. I thought I lost everything. But the last thing I was saying is, medicine is a long road, so make sure it's for you. Go and do work experience, speak to medical students, because we're the ones that are going through the, the tough mental bit, as in learning all the information, and speak to specialists, the ones that you want to go into, or specialisms that you're interested in. So I spoke to paediatricians because I'm interested in paediatrics and yeah I just spoke to them about their life and how they manage everything and it's good to make connections so those are my five take home points <laughs>